Hello and welcome to our podcast where today we are celebrating one of the most iconic comic book properties of all time, X-Men. And I am Detective Artemis. As always, it's your boy K. And today we are drinking to the 20th anniversary of X-Men. Cheers. Cheers to that motherfucker. Ugh. So, X-Men, man, 20 years, directed by Brian Pool Party Singer. Yeah, Woo. God destroyed a, a dynasty. What could have been great movies, in my opinion. I mean, he's very popular and well-loved outside of the boy fucking allegations. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, people seem to like his works. I mean, he did the usual sus- uh, usual suspects, which was a pr- really good movie. Those were dope. Yeah, I can't. Or oh, that was dope. Can't can't complain about that. But as far as X Men was concerned, or X Men is concerned, it doesn't seem like he was very. Yeah, like he just he just, he just fucked it up for me. He like, just like at first, it was my he whole childhood, he just spat on. Yeah, you know? he didn't like comic books at first. Like he's on the record saying that like comic books were for you know like idiots basically, and like he didn't want any of the crew to read the comics to get the feel for the characters and all this stuff. It so, shows. It shows in every fucking movie. And then apparently later on, as he did the more movies, and he was like, okay, yeah, you know, maybe it's cool for you know read the comic books and stuff. But at first, he was and not against still it. And up. like you said, yeah, it shows. And they're still fucked up. And this is also one of the movies that really helped you know put comic book movies on the map. You know. Oh yeah. You, uh, we could say Blade did it. I love. I love the first Blade, Blade movie. Blade was great. But it was X Men and the, Spider Man that really the did comic it. the comic book boom started. You can say you can say with Spider Man, but the comic book boom, comic book movie boom started because of X Men, hands down. Two thousand, uh, X Men came out and it was well loved and widely received. Uh, I didn't enjoy it personally. Just not, a, I'm not a purist, but it just deviated too much from the actual comics for my liking. There were a lot of discrepancies that I didn't care for. Right, but um, it it started just this whole huge craze that I mean, even in the '90s, that Batman couldn't get off. Uh, Blade couldn't get off. Hellboy even couldn't get off. I think Hellboy came a little bit after. Well, that. Batman did get off, but it was until Schumacher ran it back into the ground. Rest no, in peace. But see, but see, where were the other comic book movies after that? That's what I'm talking about. Like there were after X Men, you had your Spider Mans, you had Daredevil. So you're talking you had, about like the, you had all the, these in the 90s. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so there 90s, were a bunch yeah. of there were attempts. Like yeah. you remember Steel with Shaq? Steel, was, yeah. That and was then there one. was uh, I think Dark Man. I don't know if that was based off a comic book. Was it with Liam Neeson? I remember Dark Man. I don't and know there, if that's based off. And there was anything. Blade. The first Blade was a really good movie. Blade 1 and 2 were fantastic. All right. Blade yeah. 2 is still one of the best comic book movies ever. Yeah. The so the there yeah. were attempts. Oh, there was Spawn as well. Spawn. I thought Spawn, first, first time was really cool. Mm, for its time. Yeah. For its time. Yeah, for it's time. not age yeah. well. It, do, it doesn't fucking <laughs> age well. You know who does age well? Michael Jai White. Yeah. That motherfucker looks younger than I am. That dude, he's a lot of stuff. He was in Dark <laughs> yeah. Knight as well for a second. I don't know if Black you Dynamite. Yeah, oh, yeah. Black he Dynamite. was, uh, what's his name? Gamble, uh, I think. Gamble. Yeah, yeah. Gamble. He got penciled in the fucking in the <laughs> that eye. That wasn't him. It was uh it was it was one of his colleagues. One of his uh what, what was one of it one of his men. No, okay, yeah, one of his henchmen, lackeys. Yeah. Like uh, uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, going back to X Men, how has it aged for you? Because I know you're a like a big X Men fan. Really? Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty casual to X Men, like, you know, whatever. It's it's just too much like knowledge and history for me to remember. Like everyone's dying, Cyclops has died multiple times and all this shit. So yeah. it's a headache for me to keep up with. So I watched this movie more as a, like a casual movie person, yeah. and I thought it was okay. I still think it's okay because I just rewatched it. Um, my only gripes with it as a movie is that it it's pretty slow paced. There's only like two action set pieces, and it's just that's it's, when the movie's halfway over. Like by the time you get to yeah. the, by the time you get to the first main action sequence, then you got one more arc, and then that's just it for the movie. Yeah, and like it's some like it's, some of the set pieces were cool, but there was also a bunch of dumb stuff. Like, do you remember where uh, Wolverine's fighting that dude in the cage? And before Wolverine, like, you know, hits him with his bones, the dude yeah. is hitting him in the face, and Wolverine yeah. is, like, reacting normally. So, like, shouldn't have he been reacting metal. to his bones right away? Yeah, that dude should have had a broken fist, because he's like, basically punching fucking Yeah, and then all of a sudden, he, all of a sudden yeah. he just turns on his adamantium bones, and yeah. boom, here we go. Same thing with Mystique, where she kicks him in that face in that cool-looking shot, but yeah. her foot should have broke. Yeah, there should be <laughs> nothing that she can really do to him that would indicate that she has, an, uh, like, uh, ability to keep up with him fighting, fighting-wise, like, He's, he's his bones are made of metal. If you punch or kick that shit with full force, you're gonna break some shit. Yeah. So there was all these like these inconsistencies, which kind of like which you know which annoyed me. But uh, as a movie, I think it's it's still pretty. It's it's passable. But I mean, uh, you know, with the new like MCU I mean, stuff. I mean, well, you can call me a purist or whatever, but I never really cared for the X Men movies. Um, and that 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 that's all of them. Every single fucking X Men yeah. movie. I agree. Uh, you you know me for years, and you've heard me talk my shit about it. Like I just uh, I love don't it. think they're fantastic movies, um, especially with the kind of stuff that we're getting now. Like in the early thousands, 
it was definitely passable. Like, and I'm even on record. I don't even like the the original Spider Man movies that much. No, they have honest, not aged well. They they fucking haven't. They were. I saw that back then, but that's beyond the point. But we also had a bunch of shitty movies to follow that. We had what Daredevil, Elektra, yeah, yeah Ghost Rider. Marvel had to find its fucking way with uh, with their movies before we got to this formula with Iron Man, where they were starting to put out good content. You know. And um, that was when they like really paired up with uh, Kevin Feige, but he yeah. was he was also EP in like a bunch of like the older movies. I think as well. I I think he was. But uh, then they I think he was a producer. Like, I think he was a producer on the X Men movies. I just, I read something about him wanting a cameo in one of the original movies or some mm-hmm. shit, but it never came to pass. And then they kind of made him into like a, like a bigger like more yeah. creative role, and that's oh, yeah. how we got the MCU MCU now. Yeah. And speaking of cameos, there's an early Stan Lee cameo, and there he's the hot dog dude where. Uh, Senator Kelly's coming out the beach and he's all mutated. And oh, okay. And that's Stanley. Stan okay. I, I didn't even fucking know that because I just, and especially just having rewatched that, I didn't even and, fucking notice it. And um, I, I thought it was like, oh, is this like his first, like, you know, Marvel cameo? And it's not. His actual first Marvel cameo is in the uh, the Incredible Hulk TV movie from like the late 80s where it was a trial of Bruce Banner. Yeah. That was his actual first Marvel cameo. So, but Crazy. still, the X Men one is, is an early cameo. Goddamn. R.I.P. Stan the Man. We fucking miss you. Visionary in the comic world. Man's a legend for sure. But I mean, you know, X Men is, and it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite kind. Actually, for Marvel wise, it is my favorite uh, material to read. Yeah, you're like basically Spider-Man like my Marvel encyclopedia. Yeah. I don't want to Google and read stuff. I'd yeah. rather just hear you say it because you yeah. say it in such a funny, comedic way, and I end up learning something. I just felt that I don't know, just from reading the comics, and then when the movie came out, I remember. Matter of fact, I remember when I first heard about the movie. I think I was in like fourth or fifth grade. It was like ninety eight or ninety nine. And somebody came up to me and was like, oh, hey, did you hear they're making an X-Men movie? It's like, no fucking way. That sounds dumb. Why would they do this? They're not going to make a movie. And then, like, a month later, I started seeing advertisements for it. And I was like, holy shit, they're making a movie. I, obviously, I didn't say that because I was, like, 9 or 10. So I said something like G. Willikers or something. So you shit, weren't you know? cursing at the age of 10? No, I wasn't cursing at the age I was, if you can believe it, I was a well-off I, young I, man. So I, I can not believe it. I can't. I was quite the, Dude, I was cursing, like, I was quite seven. The proper, I was quite the proper little asshole back then, so... Proper I was saying something yeah, like you don't G find many of those nowadays. No, you don't. You really don't. <laughs> See, I remember first hearing about X Men in um, back in Wizard. Do you remember yeah. Wizard? Yeah, the magazine. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So I remember seeing it and like they show like um, some of like the uh, the photography stills and like mm. from principal photography and stuff and like look really cool. But even when they cast like Halle Berry, like even as a kid, I'm like that doesn't feel right. It doesn't. But I mean, it, there there were a lot of casting options. The the best casting that X Men did was Sir Patrick Stewart as some people, Professor X. Some people were just born to play a part, like Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool. Everything and else Stewart. outside of that fact seems a little off to me. And people make a case for Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And don't get me wrong, I like Hugh Jackman. He's I, love in, I love him in this movie. He seems like a really stand-up guy. I didn't care for him as Wolverine too much because he just wasn't the Wolverine I knew. Even in, like, and that, that could not just, that, that probably wasn't his fault. It probably was the writers. It just seemed like a really polite version of Wolverine that... I was just uncomfortable with because Wolverine in the comics was, Wolverine? especially at the night in the nineties, he's a fucking berserker, always about to go off the handle. Right. You know, he was gruff and fucking Hugh Jackman just seemed like, like a guy pretending to be an asshole, but he seemed really lovable. Yeah. So it, was, it just wasn't you, Wolverine. But you could me. tell though, like as the movies like progressed and like went along, he tried to get more angry. He tried. Like he did try. The man tried. Like I'm gonna mm-hmm. give him credit for that. Even he knows that he was like, well, you know, at least that was decent. You know, no yeah. one hates me. And, if they were to recast him or like you know cast a new Wolverine, people are gonna be too stuck with like Hugh Jackman. Oh yeah, I mean, it's I mean, been he should. I think honestly, he should have gave up the role years ago. It's the same thing with these people that are going around saying Tobey Maguire was the best Spider Man. Like, and and we watch the movies and, and then, see that it's just nostalgia tricking it's you. It's nostalgia thinking, glasses tricking 100%. you to thinking that shit was great. It really wasn't. Tom Holland is a much better Spider Man. Andrew Garfield, and Andrew was way Garfield better. was to me the best fucking Spider Man. So. You know, we're at an impasse with this shit. Yeah, and that, that's a whole separate thing, and yeah. I would love to talk about that one day. But yeah, uh, just just going back to it, uh, I liked maybe the opening scene of X2 with Nightcrawler. Oh, yeah. That is my favorite scene in, like, in any of the X-Men movies, well, and probably which, one of the best scenes Nightcrawler, of all time. Nightcrawler is the absolute man for the he X-Men. Is amazing. Like, he is my favorite character in yours as well. He's my so, favorite as well. Uh, he's... It's just the, I think I like just the duality of his character, but that whole opening scene from uh, X2 was the best part of the movie, and that happens kind of often, especially in the newer movies where it's like the first two minutes of the movie, two to five minutes, are like spectacular, you in, and then everything else that follows down. from there is just like, why 
am I looking at this shit now? Like, do this you, is fucking garbage. Do you remember the guy who played Nightcrawler? Oh, what the fuck was his name? Okay, so we were just talking about Goldeneye earlier. Yeah. It was Boris, the hacker dude. No shit. That was, oh, that was wow. Nightcrawler. Hey, it's a fucking... Cut, cut Wagner, but in the circus, I was going to see Amazing Nightcrawler. did not notice that shit at all. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. But yeah, uh, like you were saying, like a lot of the scenes are good in the very beginning, and they slow down, just like in this movie. Yeah. You know, uh, we have the uh, the opening scene with, with the Holocaust, and you know, with the uh, with Magneto. Yeah, Magneto. Yeah. And then it just slows down, and it gets really political, and then it picks up a little bit, and then we finally get to the fucking like the the Statue of Liberty scene. Yeah. And we get that terrible line from Storm. Oh uh, yeah. You, you want to say? You want to say? Uh, you know what? Okay, happens? I'll, I'll, I'll say. It, I'll say. It, I'll, yeah, say I'll, right. I'll say. All right. What do you know? What happens to a toe when it gets struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything. Yeah. What the fuck was that? That shit was garbage. I was like, okay, and then it, was, it just it was it terrible. terrible writing. It was just it was, in its in its credit. It was the year two thousand. Even the shit was the shit was written in the the shit was written <laughs> in the mid to late nineties. All right. So let's say ninety nine. We were saying dumb shit like fucking Y two K is gonna destroy us all and shit around that time. So. I think even then that line didn't do so well. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't pan out. That Speaking great. of Toad, do you remember who played him? I just, especially I just rewatched it. Come on, what the come fuck on, else come on! I know you're, you're right there. Dude, you're dude, right there, dude, dude. Hit me with it. Hit me with it. Just hit me with it. Ray Park. Ooh, Darth shit. Maul. Yeah. Darth Goddamn Maul was Toad. Dude, that is such a fucking transition because Toad is such a minor ass character, and to go from that. And a Darth Maul, and actually, one he, was, of the, he was Darth Maul before. So no, yeah, because X Men came out in two thousand, and Matt Phantom Menace was like ninety nine. It's two thousand one, wasn't it? No, could have sworn it was two thousand one. Was it? Yeah, all right. No, all right, all right. Okay. It was the nineties, man. It was like ninety nine. Yeah, all right. Well, fuck. All right. Well, even then, the transition still backwards is fucking crazy. So did such a minor character in the comic. Yeah, he gets he's overlooked. Like the, he's he, oh, he's like the butt of Magneto's joke, honestly, because he's got such a weak ass mutant power that and, the and attributes it, of a toad and shit. And in the movie, Sabretooth was like just the the idiot of the group. Like he let you know Senator Kelly go. He was the go, muscle. And he was yeah, just, he's he was the like, muscle. Uh, He's the muscle. But like, then they tried to retcon that and shit with uh X Men Origins. X Men Origins, where that was I mean, and if you if you read the X Men Origin comic, Wolverine Origin comic, there is a character in there who strongly resembles Sabretooth Sabretooth, excuse me, but is not technically its dog. It doesn't explain why, how, or they're technically brothers, but it doesn't explain how that suddenly Wolverine doesn't recognize him or Sabretooth doesn't recognize Wolverine. Like you would think that if they're brothers in the movies and this shit happened like 15, 20 years ago. He was like, hey, me brother. Uh, come on, Or, or like, or like recognize his scent or something. Because oh, yeah. like in, the, in, the, you know, in this movie, uh, he smells Sabretooth in the beginning. But later on, they're like, oh, this is Sabretooth. He's mm. like, Sabretooth? Like he doesn't know yeah. him. So it's like, shouldn't you know who also, Sabretooth that, is at that point? That shit made me, it just, it's kind of cringy just when he was smelling. Because they do a close-up of Hugh Jackson's nose. nose. It's like... Smells like bitch in here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he always figures some shit out. And I'm just like, oh my god. And they 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 axed that shit in the rest of the movies. He just fucking had a sense about him. Basically. And then yeah. like how they made him into like a paternal character. Yeah. With the like, you know, like rogues, like dad and stuff. Wolverine Wolverine did take on a lot of paternal roles with different characters, such as like uh Kitty Pride or Shadowcat. Yeah. Jubilee. He was very paternal. Rogue, not so fucking much. Like, it didn't make sense that they were just implementing her in there. Yeah, she was already, like, older at I this mean, point. I mean, if they... And, and, I, and I get they wanted to capitalize on Wolverine as the most popular character in X-Men franchise. You know, he's a... He's, All the stories he's, are, he's like, about face, him. He's the face of the Who X-Men. am I? But, I mean, they could have gone with the original cast of the X-Men and then set something up for the future that would have been just as good. Yeah, and then um, also another continuity issue with the movies is that if you watch this movie... Um, Professor is like, oh, Magneto helped me build Cerebro. Yeah. But in first class, Beast is like, oh, I built this thing. Yeah. Now, what is the real well, answer? See, those are those are those are apparently different fucking timelines and shit. Because that's what happens in Days of Future Past. Like you see that there's there's different there's alternating futures and alternating pasts and shit. This shit's a headache, man. It it is. I mean, and that's the one thing that X Men comics have got or X Men movies have gotten right from the comics that the timeline is fucked up for X Men. It's beats a shit in all different directions. How many times has Wolverine died? Uh, that off I you, know, that I know of, at least twice. Twice. Yeah. Cyclops. Cyclops. Did Cyclops die? I don't think Cyclops. Did. No, Cyclops died once. Cyclops died once. Yeah. Yeah. I just he died more than that. 
Well, anyways, like every character dies more, way more than that. It's see, Marvel, baby. And think about X Men. Think about X Men comic books is that like for me, I can't just dive into like a random issue and like to be like to follow along because it would always be a bunch of references and people I've never heard of before. Yeah. Like the, like X Men as its own like continuity outside Marvel, it it, it can be its own thing. Like there's yeah. so much people. There's in There's a whole ass universe. That's what Fox built. That's their their uh, rival to Marvel. It's a terrible rival. They're not winning this war, no. but it's the their whole universe is expanded upon X Men territory. Like I was reading, um, you know, like years ago, you let me borrow. Was it was it Paradise X or Paradise X was dope? Yeah, I was reading Univer- it. Uh, Earth X and Paradise. Or yeah, I read Paradise I read Paradise X, X and I was like, what the fuck's going on? That's that's an alternate Earth. That's not like six one six main show. Ugh. But they did try to implement some of that into future issues of X Men in the six one six arc. Um, Especially when they were trying to phase out the X Men uh, right. for uh, the Inhumans when they were going through that whole thing shit with Fox. That's over now. X Men are the bread and butter again because they have the rights to them. But they were trying to they were literally trying to get rid of the X Men because they didn't have the rights to any of the cinematic universe. Another story I liked was the the House of M arc. That was fantastic. That was really good. Everyone's like alternate like uh like realities and stuff. And then like Peter Parker's was uh it's pretty sad. It was, uh, wasn't he? He wasn't a cop, was he? No. What the fuck was that one? Uh, the, uh, it's been a while since I read House of M. I just know it culminated with, uh, I mean, uh, Scarlet Witch just decimating the mutant population and changing a lot of shit in Marvel as is. Like, X Men runs, when they, when they get into some of their prettier, heavier, heavier stuff, uh, they tend to have great impacts upon, uh, the continuity of, Marvel, like the Marvel universes as a whole, like it's not just something that happens to them. It's like on a global or universal scale, the shit that they fuck with. So, which X Men? I can appreciate. Which X Men do you hate the most? Cyclops. He's Cyclops. A bitch. He's a bitch ass. Yeah. My oldest brother loves Cyclops, but he's a fucking nerd. So I thought the casting from him was really good. James, James Marsden. Marsden. Yeah, I fucking love James Marsden. I mean, he's a great guy. Or he a great can be actor. A, he could be a douchebag, like in Sex Drive, where he's sex like, drive, the older yeah, brother. He was, he was a fucking total douche. Or he could be sympathetic, like in The Notebook. Like I've never seen it. I've never seen The Notebook. Okay, I either. have seen it, but it doesn't matter. I haven't seen it. He was I the real. He was the real love story in that movie. Just uh, saying. Teddy in fucking Westworld. He was in Westworld. Yeah, he's in. He's like yeah, in seasons one and two. He's like a main, a main guy. Yeah, I think he's a great actor. Yeah. And I liked him as Cyclops. He yeah. had like that douchebag, like you know, like oh, corny, yeah. like square I, you chin. Just, you just wanted dude. to punch him in the face. He exactly. was total Cyclops. So it's total Cyclops. I liked in the movie how you know they kind of kept up from like you know like why well, no X Men was here for the animated series. Yeah, and I know Cyclops Wolverine had that like rivalry with uh, Jean Grey. Well, it's because Jean Grey was a fickle bitch, man. It was weird in comic books where she's like. She's like all into Cyclops. They've but had she wants this a bad boy. established relationship. And then Wolverine walks in shirtless, like with his Yeti hair popping out. He's like, hey, what's up, bub? Well, fuck your girl. And Cyclops is like, no, you're not. And he's like, yeah, I made out with you, though. <laughs> totally got a second base under the shirt. But yeah, like I like how in the movie they kind of like, you know, play that up a little bit. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, thought. that's that's the whole underlying thing. Like Cyclops or Wolverine's always been in love with Jean Grey. He likes fucking redheads. And that goes back to the X Men origin run and everything. Like he just he really loves redheads. But Cyclops and Jean have this fucking rapport until she died. I mean, he moved on pretty quick. But yeah, you know, it's just it's fucking comics. What did you think of um, Ian McKellen as Magneto? Uh, Sir Ian McKellen is a great actor. I saw that where they were trying to do and where they were trying to go with it. I wish he was a little younger. Can't really help that type of shit. I really like Michael Fassbender as Magneto. I feel like he's, he's a great actor. He's he's a great actor. He put a lot of fucking heart into that character. And I, Magneto, as far as a villain, is one of the the best in Marvel, in my opinion. Um, Sir Ian McKellen was great. He did his job. I I liked him better in one and two than I did in three for sure. Right, and like as Mac uh, as Michael Fassbender, like you can kind of feel his anger yeah. more than you did with Ian McKellen's. Like. Yeah. Ian McKellen seemed like just kind of like pissed off and annoyed. Well, that's because I think I think they developed uh, Fastbender's Magneto a little bit more in uh, the, the first class. Right, run. that's true. First class was supposed to be like a, the Magneto origin yeah. movie. Then um, they did in the original trilogy. In the really original trilogy, you just know his anger stemmed stemmed from him being in a Nazi internment camp. Right, you know? that's the opening scene, and that's that's plenty of reason to fucking find that anger and uh, to show the discrimination against what he's trying to fight against already. But, you know, you take a character fully developed like that and you just wonder why they don't, they already, like, you wonder why they're fucking friends in a sense. Like, Professor X and Magneto they're friends. have had a friendship 
friendship throughout the comics. Even when they fucking disagree, often they're still civil. They're still on civil terms. Right. Even though they send their teams out to fuck with each other, even to murder each other, still don't have that civility when they get together. Uh, with the few, with the exception of a few different times. Now, do you do you think if an X Men movie were to happen in this time period, twenty twenty? Yeah. Can Magneto be in there? Because he's from like he was born like in what the the nineteen thirties. Yeah. So you think his age would play into a factor? You think they should change? Uh, you know, they're World always, War Two yeah. and make it like in a, like a more a little more recent war, or does he have to be? You know, well, like a, I mean, not to not to not to set up World War II, but that was like the perfect creation for a villain. If you if right, you yeah, no, I agree. Just the shit that he went through with the Jewish and in in internment camps. I mean, if you were to do it now, he'd be like the, 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 the closest, the, the most similar thing we have now is the, the fucking kids in cages, the fucking border and shit that they do. Um, there could be that you would have to make him younger, obviously. So it would be it would be a bit weird to have him because he what would he would he be like an eighty year old man right yeah like ninety some or whatever than, yeah. yeah so like thirties so 40s. if you make so these X movies with Magneto they have to be taking place in like the past you know well then the I, they're, they're probably gonna change his origin story they would have to change it eventually because you know they will honestly he's the most iconic X Men villain and you know he's gonna be a part of the X Men movies he might not he might not be the main villain for the first one but he's definitely gonna be the underlying threat. And I would love to see them finish it off with uh, Onslaught as, as far as a trilogy. And that shit could run through the whole Marvel Universe. So You think be, he could be like the phase, was it phase four, phase five phase, threat? Phase five or six or some shit. Yeah. I still think Galactus would probably be like the next. Oh, I would love to see Galactus. Like, uh, let's not let's not get started on that. Roger that. But yeah, so I don't know. If Magneto were to exist in a current movie, I think it would be not weird, but a little, I want to say unbelievable because they're fucking X-Men, but it, it would be... I don't know. It, it just wouldn't sit right because, like I said, he's from like the the 30s and yeah. he's the 20s. So I think, and uh, was it uh, Apocalypse? Wasn't that like in the 80s? That, uh, that's what you mean. When was Apocalypse born? Apocalypse? No, no, no oh. sorry, X Men Apocalypse movie. Was that in the 80s? This is in the 80s, right? Oh, okay, I don't. I fucking. I, I, I watched. I, I think I, so. I watched that on a flight to Florida, and I was pretty drunk, but it was terrible. And here's, so the, and here's the funny thing about that too. Yeah. Like it was Michael Fassbender. Yeah. In the 80s, whatever. Like it was like 85 or something, and then like. Fifteen years later, he fucking turns into Ian McKellen. <laughs> he aged pretty hard, aged unless pretty that's quick, also yeah. another continuity. Well, it's and that's the thing. The timelines get fucking confused. I think even Deadpool makes fun of it at some point in one of his movies. Um, I really have to rewatch uh, Apocalypse because I mean, I watched that once on that drunken flight, <laughs> and I was very disappointed. So I watched it again. I haven't Is even it? seen. I haven't even seen the Dark Phoenix saga. Oh, I, I, forgot, I, heard, I forgot about Dark Phoenix. I, I heard they. Butchered it. I I couldn't get past Sophie Turner as Jean Grey. She's just no, she's, I fucking I still hate. She's her like from Game mono of expression, monotone. Just I, I don't absolutely know. still hate it from Game of Thrones. I think I think uh, what's name from Goldeneye as well. Um, Famke Jansen. Yeah. She uh, I liked her as Jean Grey from the you know the, the, this movie. The, yeah. Okay. Do you remember her in Goldeneye? No. Oh, she was. Um, she was the Janice. She was with. Um, that doesn't matter. But yeah, there's another person from X Men who was in Goldeneye. Okay. It's pretty funny. Right on. Uh, and then going back to the movie, I I didn't like Senator Kelly and Senator, but see, he was a he was a main proponent against uh, but, the X Men in the comics. Yes. Well, are you talking about the actor or no, the, no, like in, the, in the movie? Because like, because right now he's a dude who's like you know instilling not fear but hate, and yeah. that, it's it it's weird because it kind of sits with today a little bit too. Yeah. You know, with like, you know current politics and stuff, where oh, he's yeah. instilling Absolutely. hate, and like this this dude could totally exist. In the real world, right now. But see, and that's and that's what the X Men were created for. The X Men were to signify the the marginalized and the disenfranchised. They were the 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 minorities. They were the gays. They were the people that were discriminated against, feared, and hated. And they they just brought that into instead of doing like actual race or gender or sexual orientation, just chose to make them different by giving them powers, natural naturally born powers. Also, it was getting kind of hard to keep finding reason why people got powers all of a sudden. Like, you had your radiation, your cosmic ray, your cosmic rays, yeah. your vata chemical. You just had to give people. You, yeah, you had to find a reason to, to get give past people the, powers. Yeah, the atomic age. Yeah, you had to find a reason to give people powers where you didn't have to come up with some crazy ass backstory. Like, and oh people, shit, they're and born you, with this, and right. some family member dying. Yeah. So, what X Men power would you have? Oh man, I'd totally be like fucking. Uh, I'd be rogue now. 
with how she can control her shit in the, in the modern comics. Physically too? Yeah, she can yeah, she can physically touch. No, would people. you be physically rogue? Oh no, no, no. I wouldn't be a woman. Okay. I would be I'd be me, but with rogue's powers. I just I need to clear that up. And I'd just be walking around taking people's powers all day, like gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well what if you're the only person with powers? Who's oh, and then Jake? then then I'm Jean Grey for sure. <laughs> Now, was she a telekinetic as well, or was she just a She's telepathic? a telekinetic and telepathic. Oh, okay. Her, telekinetic, her telekinesis was more, more stronger than her telepath. Telepathic. Right, okay, yeah, because I remember in the movie, she was like, lift up, she was like, wait, I thought she was just a telepath. No, 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 she's a telekinetic. Oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. her. That's her, the main mainstay of her power. And then the telekine- or tele- telepathy comes after. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. For me, I would take teleportation, but... I love Nightcrawler's, you know, teleportation into the, yeah. the bomb for whatever, yeah. like the little, like the Bamf. smoke theatrics. Yeah. But I like, I don't like his limitations. Was, uh, was there a chick who can teleport? Was it Blink? Blink, yeah. I would Blink probably and get, teleport, Blink and teleport way farther. And I think I would take, I would think I would take her, uh, her teleportation level. Well, Nightcrawler is just an overall better character, rounded. I know, but I'm just talking about power wise. Power wise, yeah, she can teleport all over the place. Nightcrawler is limited to by shit he can see, but that doesn't stop him from being a, just a straight out. He's fucking cool. Just fucking shit he's, up. he's too cool. Yeah. Like I said, like in, in X2, that was a perfect mm. way to showcase all his abilities to someone it's who's a, never seen a, it before. It's a, it's a, he did a move in there, or they tried to implement a move he does, um, it's like a teleportation flurry, where he teleports fast enough for his fist, to, uh, for his fist or his legs or some shit to materialize, and he just beats ass, and as soon as he fucking makes connection, he teleports again. So he's just fucking people up with fists and legs and kicks and shit while teleporting around. And he's, he's, he's a dope dude. He's a master swordsman, even yeah. with his fucking tail. Um, you do a lot. So, yeah. again, going back to the movie, um, how much, just the first movie, how much did it deviate from the original source material? Extremely. Like, like character-wise. Extremely. Uh, character-wise, if you're talking about the, each character development, they were already well-established as the X-Men at that point, with the exception of some of the original characters, like Beast didn't enter the movie until much later. And uh, Archangel or Angel, excuse yeah. me. I think though they entered in X three, if I'm not mistaken, the last stand or last whatever it's called. Um, but those were core members, though. Bobby Drake or Iceman was an original X Men as well. So the movie should have played out as Professor X sending off these fucking teenage uh, Cyclops, uh, Marvel Girl or Jean Grey, uh, Iceman, Beast, and Angel to fight some shit. And then maybe later you bring in another, bring in other characters like Storm and everything. So those were the, those were the the second wave of X Men that came out. So maybe the movie should have should have sort of been like how First Class was. You, you get the like the core team, and you know they they go on an adventure, or whatever. And then at the end of the movie, you can see them build a school. Yeah, would that have been better? That would have been better if they fucking used the proper characters as well and storylines. I hate life. how they used Mystique as a uh, Professor X's like a. Pretty much like a surrogate sister or adopted yeah. sister. Yeah, what the fuck is up with that? That is Juggernaut. That should have been fucking Juggernaut because they grew up together. And then after that... They're stepbrothers. Yeah, and then after yeah. that, it was all about fucking Jennifer Lawrence because she was super popular at the time. But that's... And that's why I feel like they did that because it's, it's fucking Jennifer Lawrence and uh, they had to give her her due as a star. Right, because yeah. you know, like it's like the early movies were about Wolverine and then like the later ones were about fucking Mystique. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. X-Men movies, baby. Nothing you knew. <sighs> Do you think it's aged well since then, or no, it's still just as bad? No, they're, they're terrible. They're all terrible. <laughs> I hate them all. I didn't like. I haven't even seen Dark Phoenix. Or I haven't seen Dark Phoenix either, and I know they rushed to put it out before the merger, and it just looks like shit. And the only and I and I will say, I'm still stoked for New Mutants. It looks like a fresh take on X Men. Looks like a, it looks like a horror thriller superhero movie. Let's just hope it doesn't get delayed again. How, I'm stoked to see. I fucking hope not. How would you introduce the X-Men into the MCU right now? Would you introduce all of them or a couple of them? No, one? I would. I would. Well, there are a couple of movies coming out that I would introduce. So my main one would be uh, Doctor Strange and the, what is it? The, the multiverse, madness of madness. the multiverse. Yeah. I feel like they can just pull X-Men in from another multiverse and like collapse some of the extra dimensions into 616 universe, the main universe, and have them already established. And then you just do like character fucking flashbacks or what have you just to you know build upon who the character is you can do origin stories for some okay if, if you could which x-men character would you would you like introduce first well you have to do you want to do the whole team or just you i would do the i would do the original five me just i would do the original five with professor x 
and then as mutants sort of find, found out about them. But in a in the Marvel universe where there's all these heroes already established and everything, I feel like they're gonna go in a similar route with X one the original X Men. You know what we're talking about. And uh, they're going to bring in characters to an already established place in school. And then you're just going to see from there what's uh, going forward. See, I'm thinking like one of those like end credit scenes would just be like fucking Professor X showing up. Yeah. And then it'll leave you with that. And then when it gets to like the multiverse or whatever, they can probably like, you know, bring them all out. But I don't know. It'd be a definitely like a really cool end credit scene. That would be it, a lot of people talking. It would be. But I mean, they're not, they're not planning to put on X-Men for like the next three or four years or some shit. You know, they're so going to do it eventually. Them they and are Fantastic gonna, Four. They are going to do that eventually. I can't wait for that also. Iceman or Human Torch? Ah. Oh. I'm going Human Torch all uh, the way. If you're talking about who's more powerful, Iceman for sure. Who do you like better? Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm? Yeah, Johnny Storm. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap this up over here. All right, let's do it, baby. All right, this is for X Men. Happy twenty years. Twenty years down the Just hole. That you can find us on all available podcast platforms. Once again, I am Detective Artemis. It's your boy K, and we drink and we watch things. Watch Cheers. Things. <laughs>